In this video, I'm going to show you a really quick and simple example of building a dashboard in Google Sheets from start to finish. This video is very fast paced, but I have quite a few other videos where we take a lot more time to go into detail on how to build dashboards, and I've linked those in the description below. So first, open a blank Google spreadsheet and rename the first tab Import because this is the tab where we're going to import our raw data. So I'm going to click File, Import, Upload, select a file from your device, and then in my Downloads folder, I'm going to double click my revenue report, which I've linked below in the description if you want to follow along. Then I'm going to select Replace Data at Selected Cell, and then click Import Data. Now I'm going to format my header row and so I'm going to change the font size to 12, make it bold, center it horizontally and vertically, and I'm going to freeze the first row. Now I'm going to double click between columns A and B to expand, and I'm going to do the same thing for column F. Now that we've imported our raw data, which as you can see is sales data showing how much revenue each sales representative earned on each different sales call. And so really all that we need to concern ourselves with in this video is column C and column E, the sales representative and the revenue that was earned on each different sales call. So now add a new sheet, name this new sheet totals, because this is where we're going to calculate the totals. So I'm going to go back to the import tab and I'm going to click on the revenue cell. I'm going to copy it, come back to the totals tab, and I'm going to paste it in three different locations because it makes it really easy to transfer the formatting. Now in column C, I'm going to change this text to sales rep. And then in column A, I'm going to change this to total revenue. Now column B, I'm going to use as a divider so I'm going to select column B and change the background color to dark gray and then make the column more narrow. Now I'm also going to freeze the first row so that when I scroll, the top row always stays in view. So here I'm going to calculate the total revenue for the entire report. And so what I'm going to do is type equals sum parentheses. Now I'm going to click on the import tab and I'm going to select the range that I want to sum, which is the revenue column starting at row two. And so I'm going to select this range here. Now I'm going to press the backspace key two times because I do not want to specify an ending row because I want to calculate until the end of the row. Now I'm going to press enter. And here in cell A2, I have the total revenue earned for the entire company. Now I'm going to center this cell. Now I want to calculate the total revenue earned for each individual sales representative. So first, I need a list of each sales representative to use as criteria for my next formula. So I'm going to type equals unique parentheses. I'm clicking on the import tab. And now I'm going to select the range C2 through C because this is the column that contains all of the different sales representatives, but due to the way that the report is, there's going to be duplicate names in column C, and so that's why we're using the unique function to remove the duplicates and to generate a unique list of the different sales representatives. So now I'm going to press Enter, and now I have a list of each of the different sales reps, but now I want to alphabetize this list and so I'm going to modify my formula and click right after the equal sign and then type sort and then type parentheses and press enter. And now I have an alphabetized list of the unique sales representatives. Now I can use these names as criteria for my next formula to calculate the total revenue earned for each sales representative. So now I'm going to click on cell D2. And in this case, I'm going to type equals sum if. I'm using sum if because I want to sum where a certain criteria is met. I'm going to sum the revenue for each row in the import tab where the name bill 
is found. So equals sum if parentheses, and first we need to indicate our criteria range. And so I'm clicking on the import tab and I'm going to highlight the criteria range, which is column C. And in this case, I don't want to indicate a starting row or an ending row. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Now I'm going to type a comma and it's asking for the criteria. And the criteria in this case is cell C2, which contains the name Bill. We're looking for the name Bill through column C of the import tab, which is the sales rep column. Now I'm going to type another comma and it's asking for the sum range. Which range do we want to sum when the criteria that we've already indicated is met? And in this case, it's the revenue column. And so I'm going to select the revenue column. If you wanted to, you could type out these references. Here's the tab name with an exclamation point after it, indicating that we've just typed a tab name. And then we have the range. And again, in this case, I'm indicating the entire column with no starting row and no ending row. And now our formula is showing that Bill earned about $3,000. And so I'm going to change the format to currency. And then I'm going to center this cell. And now I'm going to copy this formula down the column so that it's applied to each individual row for each individual sales representative. And this is why I've removed the row references because when you copy the formula down the column, Google Sheets will automatically change the references. And there's a couple of different ways that you can deal with this, but in this case, I've simply chosen to indicate the whole column so that the only reference that is changing as I copy the formula down is cell C2. And so I'm going to hover my cursor at the bottom right of the cell until the fill handle appears, which looks like a plus sign. And then I'm going to click, hold my click, drag my cursor downwards and release my click at row 11. And now my formula has copied all the way down. And as you can see, my reference has changed from C2 to C11. And my other references here that refer to the entire column have not changed at all, which in this case is what I wanted. And so what we're saying here, sum the revenue where the sales rep is found in the sales rep column. Now what we're going to do is display this data visually with charts on another tab. So add a new tab, rename the tab dashboard, select the entire sheet. You can do this by clicking at the top left or by holding control on the keyboard and pressing A. Now change the background color. Now click on cell A1, click insert, and then click chart. And what I'm going to do is add a scorecard chart. And so in the chart editor here, under chart type, I'm going to click the drop down, scroll down, and then click scorecard chart. And this particular chart, I want to expand through row seven and through column H. Now, if your chart editor closes, simply double click to open it again. And what I want to do is choose the data range, the range that contains the data that I want to connect to this chart. And I'm going to do this fairly quickly by clicking on this little grid looking thing right here, select data range, a window pops up. Now I can simply click on the totals tab and then select the range A1 through A2, which appears right here, totals exclamation point A1 colon A2 then I'm going to click OK. Now the data is connected to my chart. And what I want to do is add a title to this chart. So I'm going to click on Customize in the Chart Editor, open the Chart and Axis Titles menu, and enter a title text of Total Revenue. Press Enter, click Bold, center the title, change the title text color to black, and then change the title font size to 36. So now scroll up, click on key value, again under the customize tab in the chart editor, and then center the key value. So now we've created our scorecard chart, and there's one thing left to do, which is to create a column chart 
to represent the total revenue earned for each sales representative. So I'm clicking on cell A8. I'm going to click insert and then click chart. I'm going to position my chart below the scorecard chart. I'm going to close the editor so that I can expand my chart over to column H and then I'm going to expand it vertically through row 27. Now again, I'm going to double click to open up the chart editor again, and I need to select the data range. So I'm going to click on the grid, select data range, a window pops up. I'm clicking on the totals tab, and now I'm going to select the range C1 through D11, which again appears right here. If you want, you could have typed that manually, Either way works. Now click OK. And now we have a column chart that represents the revenue earned for each sales representative. But I think that this chart looks pretty generic, and so I'm going to make some quick formatting changes to make it look better. First, I'm clicking on Customize. I'm opening up the Series menu. I'm going to change the fill color to a very dark blue color. Personally, I think that this looks much better. So now my columns are the color that I want them to be. I'm going to scroll down even more and then select data labels because I want numbers to show me how much each column represents. I'm scrolling down a little bit more, changing the data labels to bold format. I'm going to change the data labels to a font size of 14. Now I'm going to click on the vertical axis. I'm going to make it bold and change the label font size to 16. Now the horizontal axis, I'm going to make it bold and change the label font size to 18. And so now our dashboard is built. We've imported our data into one tab, calculated our totals on another tab, and then we used a different tab to display the data that we calculated visually with charts. Now, if you want, I have an entire dashboards course that you can take, and I've linked to all of the dashboards below. The next dashboard in the course is very similar to this one, but it's a little bit more complex. We spend more time on formatting to make it look better. You'll learn more formulas and methods for building dashboards, and we go at a much slower pace so that you can follow step by step. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I hope that you have a great day.